Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Stina Siriachna, and uh, she's going to talk about genotype-specific natural history of oral HP infections among children followed up for six years in the prospective Finnish family HPV study. Thank you, Stina. Uh, Good morning, everybody. And first, I have to say that I don't have any uh, conflict of interest for this study. And uh, we have heard that uh, HPV and also oral HPV infection should be a sexually transmitted disease. However, there is quite a lot evidence that this might not be the only case for transmission. And uh, one argument is that HPV can be detected in adults and also in children. Even the benign HPV-induced lesions can be found in oral mucosa, and HPV can be detected in newborns, which has been reviewed in one of my papers. And recently, a nice meta-analysis on vertical transmission was published this year. Uh, actually, we established uh, nearly 10 years ago a Finnish family HPV study to understand the dynamics of HPV infection in family and to understand the transmission modes and also the early infection in children. This is a direct continuation for the previous studies what we made after founding the HPV in oral cancer 1983, and we became interested to look the um, um, sexual transmission in women who had a genital HPV infection. We didn't find any evidence, and that the, was the basis of Yari Kellokoski's PhD thesis. We continued to the newborns and could find evidence that HPV could be vertically transmitted. And this is a now continuation. We wanted to have the fathers and also to have more extensive sampling. And we have the six years follow-up data, which um, was actually, this was actually planned for a three years study, but we made an extension. And you can see that we had actually 299 pregnant women who delivered 331 children and half of the fathers participated, and the sampling is quite extensive. We have the breast milk, placenta, blood, uh, genital, and oral samples. And these studies have, part of the studies have been published uh, in many papers, which have been resulted in, in three PhD theses. So here I want to present the uh, follow-up data on the oral HPV infection of children from birth up to the six years. And uh, this year we have already published the similar data from the mothers and fathers as well. And this is the flowchart of the study. And as you can see, we started, we had nearly the whole, whole cohort of our children. We had uh, totally nine visits and uh, even in the eighth visit, uh, which was three years visit, we had lost only 59 of the children. And then we lost part um, a bit more when we made this extension. So we had the oral and genital scrapings from all these children. We had the blood sample, the saliva samples at three years and six years. And at six years uh, visit, we made also clinical examination and um, Made, and then we have the interview and uh, the history, the medical history of the children. We use for HPV testing the, we use the scrapings to get more cells. We, we have been wanted, we always use nested PCR because based on our earlier studies, we knew that the copy numbers are very low in the oral mucosal <coughs> samples, and especially in children, it might be difficult to get enough cells. And this nested PCR was then actually, with our first method, we looked only the presence of high-risk HPV or not. Later, we started once again and made nested PCR or utilized the previous PCR product and made an HPV genotyping with Luminex system, which detect 24 different HPV types. 
And here are the, the description of the criteria with, uh, <coughs> with such uh, incident infection, uh, genotype-specific persistence, as well clearance, and the time of the first clearance. And these have been described more clearly in our previous papers. So two, uh, two samples, the sequential samples or more, was the definition for persistence. We can use different definition, which is really also <coughs> will have an effect on the results. And here are the outcomes of, of the results. So 334 children at the beginning, always negative in all these nine samples. This was 135. Uh, uh, children, incident infection, one or uh, one sample becoming positive. We could find a genotype specific persistent in 14 children, and then non specific finding different types in six children, fluctuation, the positive coming and going in 42 viral clearance in 18, but when we wanted to look also what happened here in between in these cases, we could get more persistent infection cases where we have two sequential sample positive, uh, but the first sample was negative. And these are the results. So we find quite high HPV prevalence varying from 8.7 to 22 during these six years, and this is the mean follow-up time of the whole cohort. We couldn't find in any time point any differences between the boys and girls. And these are the HPV types found, and you can see that they are the same what we can find in anal region or female genital or, or male genital or oral tract. HPV 60 was the most prevalent, followed by HPV 16, 18, 1, 11, 31, 33, and uh, we could also find multiple types and sometimes multiple types with four different HPV types. Uh, HPV 6 and 16 were the one to persist, and the persistent time was, the mean persistent time was 19 months for these types. And here you can see the different types. We expect to find many HPV types at birth because the sample is taken in delivery room. And at day three, when the infants are leaving the hospital, nearly half of the HPV positivity has already gone. And then we find, once again, a bit higher preval uh, prevalence in one month sample, but then the figure started to climb to 8.7%. If we would not use the nested PCR, we would find be somewhere in one, one or two uh, percent, and then the child start to collect the HPV types. And it's known that when we look at these benign HPV-associated lesions, papillomas, they, there are two peak indices, one at the age of one a year approximately, and the uh, other between seven and 12 years. And here is the... Uh, Life table analysis acquisition, and we couldn't find actually no difference for any of these species. They, they were collected in the same way, whether they were species uh, 10, uh, 9, or 7. That was the same for clearance, and the mean clearance time of species 10, 9, and 7 were nearly the uh, same, 28 up to 34 months. And then when we look at the predictors, which were estimated, we use for, if we start from the incident oral infection, AIDS is clear that because we start from the birth without any age that, that the child collect incident infection. But interestingly, that if the father was seropositive, we could find this um, uh, association, so it increased the risk for incident in infection by 3.3. And when we look at the clearance, so actually if the mother was seroconverted, that increased the clearance 
and also the father's seropositivity had an effect. But I think the most interesting data is that when we look at the persistent infection, and now we use also the G model, so that's the pairwise comparison of the mother and child, the same time point, that we could find that the mother's oral HPV increased the risk of persistence of uh, of oral infection in the child. Exactly the same what we found in, in the mo mother-father pairs, that the uh, persistent infection of the partner increased the risk of the persistence in the other partner. So we can conclude that uh, HPV is common uh, and around in the family. HPV serology of the mother and father and mother's oral HPV status might be of importance in predicting the outcome of oral HPV infection in the infants. And then the final and very important question, what does it mean, this early HPV infection? Does it increase the risk or protect for HPV-associated lesions in the head and neck things? Uh, I want to uh, recommend you to visit, if you have time, two posters, 355 and 356 from our group, where we have looked at the cell-mediated immunity in 10 children who, whose mothers have developed a CIN during our follow-up. And we could find that there is an uh, HPV-16 specific T cell response against E6, E6, and E7. These children are not vaccinated. They haven't started any sexual uh, contacts yet, and what was surprised that the reaction was strongest in children which were, uh, whose mothers had got the CIN3. So I want to thank you for your attention, and these are the group who have worked to make all these results available for us now and uh, especially the serology done, done in Heidelberg, and then we have got and will get help from, from Leiden from our cell-mediated immunity studies, and uh, we have uh, four, four persons, Anna, Aro, Hanna here, and Mario Trintala, who was the gynecologist in, when we collected the samples. Thank you. Quick question, please. I, I was wondering about the zero conversions among, among the children. How common was it for the children to zero convert and, and did it uh, relate to the DNA? That's actually, I think that you could address this question directly to Michael Pavlita, but if I remember correct, during the first years we had a zero conversion for, or what we discussed that could be for for um, uh, was it six six uh, children? We haven't published that because it has been confirmed, and I think we start to be ready to to finish that manuscript. But you can discuss more more, more this thing in detail. But it didn't have any 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 effect. It was very close. If we if we didn't take age account, it would have been significant. But with age, it uh, lost its significance. Yeah,